In section 3.2, we look at radians and degrees. So far in this course, we have been measuring all of our angles in degrees. And the basic principle there is one complete revolution is equal to 360 degrees. And then we measured angles from there. So first of all, let's talk about radian measure from the perspective of a circle with a central angle. So remember that a central angle is an angle with its vertex at the center of a circle. So here we have a circle and we have some central angle theta and the circle has a radius of r. So in this circle, a central angle that cuts off an arc that is equal in length to the radius of the circle is a measure of one radian. So if you have an angle here and the arc that is cut off by that angle, if the length of this arc is equal to the radius of the circle, we say this angle theta is equal to one radian. So quite literally, the word radian comes from the word radius. couple of notes here. So it is common to omit the word radian when we're talking about radian measure for an angle. So for example, if we have an angle where it says theta equals 2, that automatically means the measure of angle theta is 2 radians. If we're talking about degrees, we need to make sure that we use the degree symbol. You cannot forget to use a degree symbol when you want to talk about degrees. Because if the degree symbol is not there, we will be assuming that the measure is in radians. Okay, now let's give the definition of how to measure an angle in radians. Suppose we have a central angle theta in a circle of radius r. So you can see the situation here. And let's suppose that this angle theta cuts off an arc length that is equal to s. The measure of the angle theta in radians is given by s divided by r. So you can see that right down here. So the way we measure an angle theta in radians is we take the length of the arc that it cuts off, which is s, and we compare that to the radius of the circle. So for example, Let's suppose the radius of a circle is four inches. And let's say that the arc that is cut off is five inches. Then the measure of the angle theta in radians would be five inches divided by four inches. And what you'll notice is that the inches cancel and five divided by four is 1.25. And of course, this means 1.25 radians. Now, what that quite literally means is that this arc length s is 1.25 times the radius of the circle. Okay, So in other words, the arc that's cut off is just a little bit more than the length of the radius. So here is our first official example. We have a central angle theta in a circle of radius 3 centimeters cuts off an arc of length 6 centimeters. What is the radian measure of theta? So again, we have a radius of 3 centimeters. The arc length in this case is 6 centimeters. Remember, theta is s divided by r, so it is the arc length divided by the radius. And after we cancel the units here, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the measure of this angle in radians is theta equals 2. And again, remember that this is the same as writing 2 radians. But as I mentioned previously, we will typically not be putting the word radians after our measured angle. Now let's talk about how we can compare the measurements of angles in radians and degrees. So we know that when you have a circle of radius r, 
the circumference of that circle is 2 pi times that radius r. So if I have an angle theta, which is one full rotation, so in other words, it's the central angle that intercepts the entire circle, then the measure of that angle theta in radians is the length of the arc that it cuts off. Well, if it's the entire circle, the length of the arc is the circumference of the circle. So that's 2 pi r divided by r. And you can see here that in this case, the r's cancel out and we just get 2 pi. So what that means is one rotation is 2 pi radians. And what this allows us to do then is we can come up with an equivalency. We know that 360 degrees is also equivalent to one rotation. So 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. Now if you take that relationship and divide both sides by 2, you come up with 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And that's what you see down below here. So in order for us to get conversion factors, we're going to use the fact that 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. Now what this also means is that one degree is equal to pi divided by 180 radians, and one radian is equal to 180 divided by pi degrees. But the most important thing is to just remember that we have an equivalency, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Let's do some examples. So in this example here, we want to convert 45 degrees to radians. So if I want to convert, we're going to remember that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And if I have a 45 degree angle, what I need to do is multiply by a conversion factor. And this factor that I multiply by has to be equivalent to one, essentially. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if we want degrees to be canceled, we need to put degrees down on the bottom and we need to put radians on top. And we know that pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. Now when we multiply these, the degrees cancel out, and then we can also divide 45 into 180, which goes in exactly four times, and so this ends up being pi over four radians. So 45 degrees is equal to pi over four radians. So notice that all I'm doing is I'm multiplying by the conversion factor, which in this case is pi over 180. Let's try the next example. Let's convert 450 degrees to radians. Well, in this case, the work is already out here. So again, we're multiplying by pi over 180. And if you do that, you end up getting 5 pi over 2. Now this is sort of a shortened version of the work, so let's remember that if you're converting 450 degrees, you're multiplying by the conversion factor of pi radians over 180 degrees. And again, the reason the pi is on top is because we need the degrees in the denominator so that they can cancel out. So these cancel, and then we can divide uh, 90 goes into 450 five times, and 90 goes into 180 two times, and this gives us 5 pi over 2 radians. Now let's talk about converting radians to degrees. So in this problem here, we have pi over 6, and we want to convert it to degrees. So let's remember that pi over 6 is really pi over 6 radians. 
and I'm going to multiply that by the appropriate conversion factor. Well, if I want degrees in the end, I need the radians here to cancel. So in this case, I'll put pi radians in the bottom of the fraction and 180 degrees in the top of the fraction. When I multiply, the radians cross cancel. Pi and pi also cross cancel. And what we end up with in the end is 180 degrees divided by 6. And if you do 180 divided by 6, you get 30. And then you can see the degrees are still left over there. So pi over 6 radians is equal to 30 degrees. And let's do one more. We have convert 4 pi over 3. So let's remember once again, this is 4 pi over 3 radians. We're converting it into degrees. So the conversion factor is 180 degrees over pi radians. Again, the radians cross cancel, the pi cross cancels. And what we end up with here is, you could do a little cross canceling with the, the 3 and the 180. So we know that 3 goes into 180 60 times. And what I have left is 4 times 60, which is 240. And then I also have degrees left over. So 4 pi over 3 radians is equal to 240 degrees. And one final comment here. We're going to begin to drop the radians on these. So we'll end up saying in the, in the end here that pi over 6 is equal to 30 degrees and 4 pi over 3 is equal to 240 degrees. So just to summarize what we're talking about here, if you have an angle in degrees and you want to convert it into radians, you're going to multiply by pi over 180. And if you have an angle in radians and you want to convert it to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. And then just as a little side note over here, one radian is equal to 180 over pi degrees. And if you divide this on a calculator, you get approximately 57.3 degrees. Now, I only say this as a point of reference. You should not be memorizing that one radian is 57.3 degrees. First of all, it's not exact. And secondly, it's not that important to remember this, but it's just kind of nice to know that that's about how big one radian is. So what you can see here is that one radian is a lot bigger than one degree. And then just as a, another comparison, so if I have an angle of 20 degrees and I draw that angle in standard position, we know that 20 degrees is about here in the first quadrant. However, if you were to graph the angle 20 radians, this is what it would look like. It would be several full rotations, and then you would end up at this angle right here. Now, how do we know it's several full rotations? Well, because what we would have to do to convert it into degrees is we would take 20 radians, we would multiply it by 180 divided by pi, and if you do this on a calculator, literally you're going to have 20 times 180 divided by pi. And this will be in degrees, right? Because these radians here cancel out. And if you do that math, you get 1,145.9 degrees. And this is approximate. Now we know that one full rotation is 360 degrees. So when you go around once, that's 360. When you go around again, that's another 360, which is 720 degrees. And then when you go around again, you get 1,080 degrees. So 1,145.9 degrees is this angle right here. Okay, and that's equivalent to 20 radians. 
So again, the, the whole point here is just to make sure you fully understand that radians and degrees are completely different, right? So 20 degrees and 20 radians are just really, really different angles. And it's very important that we make the distinction. And the only way to make that distinction is to make sure when you're measuring an angle in degrees, you have to make sure you put this degree symbol. And when you're measuring an angle in radians, you need to make sure that you either write the word radians or leave it blank, right? Do not put the degree symbol when you are talking about radians. So next I want to talk about de degrees and exact values of radians for the special angles. So we'll go through a few here. So zero degrees is the same as zero radians. That's relatively simple. We know that 360 degrees is the same as two pi radians. We talked about that. And we know that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. But we also know that we have other special angles like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, etc. If you convert 30 degrees into radians, you get pi over six. 45 degrees converts to pi over four. 60 degrees converts to pi over 3, and 90 degrees converts to pi over 2. And then just for good measure, 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2. You should memorize these values. We use these angles and their corresponding radian measures so often in this course that you don't want to have to convert every time you see a value. Now, I also have a unit circle over here with those special angles graphed on that unit circle. So you can see here, for example, here's the angle 30 degrees, and 30 is equivalent to pi over 6. Here's 45, which is pi over 4. Here's 60 degrees, which is pi over 3, etc. Now, another thing that is kind of nice from this graph is let's focus on 60 degrees and 120 degrees. So you all know that 120 is 2 times 60. So if 60 degrees is pi over 3, then if I want to get 120 in radians, all I have to do is multiply that by 2, right? So 120 degrees is going to be 2 times pi over 3, which is... 2 pi over 3, and you can see that right here. So it's kind of nice because it gives you sort of another way to convert angles. Let me give you another example. Look at 150 degrees. If I want to convert 150 degrees into radians, one way to do it is to simply multiply by the conversion factor, which is what we did previously. And if you do this and you cancel the common factors here and here, you will end up getting 5 pi over 6. However, there's some math involved here, right? So what we're doing is we're saying 30 goes into 150 five times, and 30 goes into 180 six times, and the degrees cancel. However, another way to think about this is 150 degrees is 5 times 30 degrees. And if you memorize that 30 degrees is pi over 6, then 150 degrees is going to be 5 times pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. For me, this is a lot more intuitive and is also quicker when it comes to measuring angles. Let's do one more, just to make sure that we understand. Let's look at 300 degrees. Suppose I don't know that 300 degrees is 5 pi over 3 radians. Well, we do know that 300 degrees is 5 times 60 degrees. And if I simply memorize that 60 degrees is pi over 3, then 300 degrees is 5 times pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. So it just gives us an alternative method for converting at least special angles 
into radians. Now let's talk about trig functions of angles in radians. There's not a whole lot to talk about here. Basically what you need to do at this point is just simply think of the angle in degrees. So if you have the sine of pi over 6, we're going to think of this as the sine of 30 degrees because pi over 6 and 30 degrees are equal to each other. And we know the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Likewise, for the next example, we have 4 times the sine of 7 pi over 6. So, again, at first, we're not going to be really comfortable with radians. So I'm going to want to think of 7 pi over 6 in degrees. So we have to convert that. Now, I've already talked about one way to convert it. Let me use the quick and easy way to convert this. 7 pi over 6 is 7 times pi over 6. And pi over 6, we know, is 30 degrees. So 7 times 30 degrees is 210 degrees. So 4 times the sine of 7 pi over 6 is 4 times the sine of 210 degrees. Now from here, we still have to calculate the sine of 210. Well, we've talked about this in previous sections. So what we can do here is we could draw a simple graph of the angle. So here is 210 degrees. This, of course, is 180. So what we can see here is the reference angle for 210 degrees is 30 degrees. So this is going to be the same as 4 times, and then sine of 210 is the same as sine of 30 degrees. However, because we're in the third quadrant, this will be negative, right? Because sine is negative in the third quadrant. So now what I have is negative 4 multiplied by the sine of 30, and the sine of 30 is 1 half. And negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2. So for right now, the way we convert, the way we calculate trig functions of angles and radians is we simply convert them to degrees and use previous methods. One final example, we want to evaluate 4 times the sine of 2x plus pi when x equals pi over 6. So we have 4 times the sine of 2 times x. x is pi over 6. I'm going to plug that in. And then plus pi. A couple of different ways to do this. One way to do this is to simply multiply 2 times pi over 6. So 2 goes into 6 3 times. So that's equivalent to pi over 3. And then plus pi. And then we can get a common denominator. Pi over 3 plus pi over 1. If I multiply the top and bottom by 3, this is 1 pi plus 3 pi, which is 4 pi over 3. So this is 4 times the sine of 4 pi over 3. And now from there, I need to convert 4 pi over 3 into degrees. Well, this is 4 times pi over 3, which is 4 times 60 degrees, which is 240 degrees. So what I'm being asked to do here is find 4 times the sine of 240 degrees. Now, how do we finish that? Well, we need the reference angle for 240. Now, it's possible that you know the reference angle is 60 degrees. If not, you can draw a picture. 240 degrees is here. 180 degrees is here. So the angle between those two is 60 degrees. So this is the same as 4 times the sine of 60 degrees. However, because the angle is in the third quadrant, once again, sine is negative in the third quadrant, so I need to put a negative in front of this. And now I just need to figure out what is the sine of 60 degrees. Well, this is a value that we should have memorized by now, and that is radical 3 over 2 
And finally, when you multiply these, you can cancel the twos and get negative two radical three. So that's one way to do it. Now, there is another way to do it, which I feel is a little bit easier. Let me go ahead and show you that method. So what I'm going to do in the beginning is go ahead and plug in our pi over 6, just like we did before. So we get 4 times the sine of 2 times pi over 6 plus pi. And then right away, I'm going to convert to degrees. I know pi over 6 is 30 degrees, and I know pi is 180 degrees. So if I interchange those, I get 4 times the sine of 2 times 30 degrees plus 180 degrees, which is 4 times the sine of 60 degrees plus 180 degrees, and 60 plus 180 is 240. And then from there, of course, as we did on the previous page, we know the reference angle for 240 is 60 degrees, but we have to have a negative because in the third quadrant, sine is negative. And then we plug in the value for sine of 60, and we do the math, and we get negative 2 radical 3. So take your pick. Either way is fine.